Yo, 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 what's up, people? Welcome back to another episode on Jason Guna TV. Of course, it's your boy Jason Guna here, and we're going to discuss a few things tonight. So, of course, as you see in the title, we're going to be discussing the CONCACAF Under-20 Championships, the group stage draw occurred today, and we're going to discuss the groups and talk about talk about the uh, Reggae Boys' chances to get through. Obviously, we have Group A, Group B, Group C, 12 teams. Um, so we're going to go through that and show you all the, ta- the dates and everything for those games and the opponents. Um, also, we're going to obviously look about the Reggae Boys over in Europe playing in the Europa League and the Conference League today. Um, of course, at the end of the video, towards the end, we'll also discuss briefly the UCL quarterfinals the second day. Of course, we had an episode where we went through the first two games, the arsenal Bayern and the um, Real Madrid-Man City games. So, yes, people. So, um, first and foremost, I just want to thank everybody for reaching out. People have been letting me know that they're enjoying the content, um, giving me a lot of encouragement so i just want to thank everyone that has reached out to me privately whether it's instagram facebook um you know in the comment section of these videos just keep 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 the um pointers coming people definitely gonna keep on making this kind of content because as i said when i first made my first video i just enjoy doing this content because it's easy it's football people all of us love it right so first and foremost i mean just big up whoever is in the building martin baker bless up yourself bro um uh, float respect blessings 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 um my brother big ike bless up bless up bless up mm, we out here father bling up you know r r up 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 yeah so i'm gonna go on um i'm gonna share around the video so some more people can forward and know some of the live um but yeah how, how everybody day go today i had a good day today you know people a lot of football lot of sports you know i'm a golf fan as well so first they are the masters you know tiger woods was playing i can know you have another name for that tournament i won't bother say it here <laughs> but yeah people tiger woods back back on the course actually never looked too bad walking around you know but yeah managa around it the big the big thing for the day i can't wait for talk about uh there was a a match today at anfield liverpool faced atalanta yeah so you know i don't know what happened you know i don't know what happened but something happened over there yeah man dry your eyes <laughs> yeah man, the slave masters yeah if a bridge would tell me a long time ago, bro, one time I watched the Masters and the man say, you are the slave masters, you know. Made my, that opened my eyes, I could not even believe. I never, ever thought of that. But then it made so much sense. Yeah, so I'm just sending this out, people. All right, cool. So that's done. So, yeah. Boy, R R the Vic, the, the, the game today, wow, I can't smile. The man want me upset. <laughs> yeah, bro. It made perfect sense when you said it, bro. Slave masters, yo, channel. I never get that out of my head. Every time I watch the masters, now I think of that. Still don't ruin it for me, though, but, channel. It's a hilarious thing. But, yeah, um, all right. So, the first thing I want to talk about, people, of course, today... The um, under-20 draw happened, and um, I watched it live and everything, saw it going on. There were four pots. Um, pot one, you had, um, what was it, USA, Honduras, and Mexico. Pot two had Costa Rica, Dam Rep, and Panama. Pot three had Cuba, El Salvador, and Guatemala. And pot four had Jamaica, Canada, and Haiti. So... You know, looking at the groups and the pots, you know, obviously they have one from each pot in the three groups. And, you know, my dream group, I had a dream group in my head. And I will say, like, you know, one of the teams that I kind of wanted from each pot is in our group. Um, Cuba would have been that team. But the other ones, I didn't really want them in my group, to be honest. USA or Costa Rica. But 
you know, the groups were going to be tough regardless. There were, there were tough teams in each pot. Um, so, yeah, let me go ahead and pull up on screen for you people. Uh, they have a nice, CONCACAF does a nice little file that they send out. And on that file, you can see all the groups and all the games and what dates. I'm going to put that on screen so we can look at it, people. Uh, let me see. Yeah, people, so if you haven't already, make sure to like the video. That's, of course, how the video gains traction out there and people know that we are live. Zine. Why it can't do it? Uh, hold on, people. Man, I don't know why it don't want to share this. <laughs> Let me try this. All right, I should be doing it now. No? All right, well, it I said, can't do it that way, the people. So we're going to pivot and do it the next way. Yes, people. So I'm pulling up the men's under 20 here. Here we go. Here we go. All right, so that should be good enough. All right, Duclan checking in. Bless up, Duclan. Bless up, bless up, bless up. Martin, big up, you know. How many teams advance from the groups? Yeah, it's going to be two teams from each group and then the top two third place finishers. Yeah. Big up Jason Guna. Yeah, man. Bless up. Bless up Sherman Scott. One done. Clarin done. Top two teams each group alongside. Yep. 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 Simon, bless up. Respect for being here, bro. Yeah, man. So, bless up, you know, Stefan. All right. So, let's share this screen now since I have it pulled up all right so this right here people is the basically the nice diagram that they give you from CONCACAF here I don't think I can zoom it any more than that um, but on the bottom of this here you will see the groups so group A you have USA Costa Rica Cuba and Jamaica group B Honduras Dominican Republic El Salvador and Canada and Group C, Mexico, Panama, Guatemala, and Haiti. So if you look at the diagram above, you will see, you know, each group and each group color-coded, and you see when they play and what dates and everything. So our first game is going to be on the 19th to open the tournament. It's going to be USA versus Jamaica. Um, and then we will be playing Costa Rica on match day four, um, which will be the 22nd of July, and then on the 25th of July, we will be playing Cuba. So, of course, people um, will be playing those three games, two days rest in between. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's going to be a real tough one to have to face the USA first. Um, but that could be a good thing as well, you know, get it out of the way early. Um, it will be their first game in the tournament. You know, maybe we can surprise them. Um, maybe they won't be firing on all cylinders yet. Maybe that's a good thing. Um, and then, of course, we'll play Costa Rica next. So we'll we'll have on paper the two toughest opponents first. Um, so, you know, going into that last game against Cuba, uh, if we can have some points on the board going into that, that would be a good thing. Um, but, yeah, for, for me, this under-20 championships, um, you know, based on what I saw in the qualifying rounds, and the quality of our opponents in those rounds, you know, we'll definitely be having a much sterner test in this under-20 championship in the group. Um, and I am hopeful that, you know, some of the players that maybe weren't available for the last qualifiers due to them, you know, playing professionally in, in Europe um, and in the States, you know, they'll have a chance to actually be a part of this lineup come July. Um, I do hope, uh, I do see 
space is available for some pl- players to come in. Um, you know, I, w- I don't want to name names because I don't want to disrespect anybody, but, um, you know, I-, I will I will say, you know, if we had a 20-man roster that went, I would be comfortable with about seven to eight of them making the team uh, this upcoming tournament. And hopefully we'd, we could have some new recruits coming in to maybe raise the level a bit. Um, you know, and that might be wishful thinking on my part, but, you know, I know that there were more players uh, that were available to play. Maybe they just didn't have their paperwork sorted. And um, from what I've heard and what I gather, a lot of those players have since gotten their documents ready and would be ready to take the field in July. So, um, you know, Jerome Waite is going to be the new leader of this group. And I am hopeful that he has, you know, had the conversations that needed to be had with the former coach, John Wall, who I'm sure would have, you know, laid the groundwork for for most of the recruits that would be coming in. And um, hopefully, you know, we can just continue that conversation and and drive all those things home that we need to, to get these good boys ready to be there for the, for the, for, um, for the tournament in July and hopefully for, you know, a few weeks prior as well. Um, So, yeah, what you guys think, people, based on the groups, um, you know, you you like our chances. Where do you see us getting the points from? Um, You know, these teams that we are going to be facing, um, they, they are, they are pretty good teams. I mean, the U S they, they have already been playing games and everything. Um, you know, very quality, quality outfit. A lot of good players in their system. Um, I'm just looking at their most reach, recent matches that they have played. I know they recently played against the, the U20 of England. Yeah, Kevin Paredes, Tyler Wolf, good players. Paredes, of course, in the Bundesliga. Wolf in the MLS. So yeah, they, they have some they have some very good players. Let's see what people are saying in the chat. So we have U20 and Copa on the same day, it looks like. No, you know, uh float. The, the Copa dates are June. So the Copa is up is is up roughly uh you know. The Copa, I'm not sure when the finals and everything is, but I know that the first game for Jamaica is the 22nd. The dates are the 22nd, 26th, and 30th, but it's of June float. Duklan said, the silence surrounding the preparation is a bit concerning to me. Yeah, well, Duklan, you know, one of the things, and I spoke to this a bit in the last time I did a show, um, the one of the reason given for John Wall's removal from, from this team was work one of the reasons cited was workload and just not being able to you know do two things at once and what was surprising to me was Jerome Waite was named the coach who currently you know is going strong in the JPL with the playoffs coming up um you know I don't wish ill on him in those playoffs but I think it would be better for the U20 if they lost in the first round you know um I don't again I don't wish that on him but I, I just worry, you know, about how much he can put into this with, with these playoffs coming up for Tivoli. I'm sure he would want to get them over the line as well. Um, so, you know, there's only so much hours in the day. Um, and I know a lot of it, if I was the coach of this team, would be devoted to it. You know, and, and I just I think that the silence probably has a lot to do with the fact that, he, you know, what how much can he really say at this current time? I have no hope in the selection process, so I am not confident. Yeah, Martin. Um, look, the the signs are there in terms of I know that there has been conversation and and communication with the players that we want to get, uh, but at the end of the day, it's just gonna come down to you know what that squad looks like when we see it, you know, because it. it there have been situations with with Jamaican teams in the past where we see names on paper and you know you don't see them when the team sheet is 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 made. So, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna look take a glass half full approach, Martin, and just say, look, I know that you know we laid the foundation for some things to happen, and I'm just hoping that we can get them over the line. That's all I would say. 
Yes, I got it mixed up. That's right. Yeah, float is is June. Mm hmm. Omar said, not looking good for Jamaica unless we play a low block and play for a positive result in the first two games. Well, Omar Fowling, I mean, against USA for sure, we're going to have to come up with some kind of defensive game plan. Um, you know, they can probably look to the senior men's performance in the in the Nations League, how, how we were able to stifle the US for long periods. Um, you know, keep them at arm's length, keep the, keep the attempts from outside the box for the most part. You know, we'll have to look at that blueprint for sure. Costa Rica, you know, hopefully we wouldn't have to play such a low block, but um, the U.S. for sure, I think we'd have to employ some kind of low block to get some kind of result for sure. Stefan said, I've said this for years, the level of preparation for youth teams leave much to be desired at every youth level, be it male or female, preparation is always an issue. Yes, yeah, Stefan, right, I think the problem is like the foresight that's needed. Um, so like, you know, any international window that we have, if if we really want to be serious about our youth programs, you know, being serious, we do what other nations do. You know, in the last window, the U.S. played two games and they were able to feel the team that they're going to take to the championship because it was an international window and they wanted their professional players to get some game time before the actual championship. Um, you know, I know these things cost money and that's probably one of the reasons why, but... I feel like if they could plan far enough ahead, maybe these things could be more possible. Um, you know, I would love to sit down with those that I would love to see the plans for, you know, when a cycle is coming up, I would love to see what kind of plans are rich, really and truly made, like the actual plans, the, the you know, the, 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 you know, guidelines of, you know, by six months time, we want to have this accomplished. We want to play this many friendlies. We want to have this many camps. You know, what is, is there something like that that they look to as a guide or is it just, you know, okay, it's coming up. Let's get serious about it now. Cause that's what it looks like from the outside, to be honest. Same thing with fuzzy. It's not clear, not getting attention. It deserves. Yeah. Duklan, one of the things I spoke to on this same topic um, was, how possible is it ever going to be where a local coach, you know, only has a youth team as their as his job? Is it that we don't pay enough to warrant that to happen? So the guys have to have several other jobs? Go for it against Cuba. Yeah. Going cheaper to your local coach who cannot dedicate to the program. Well, that's the funny thing, Omar Fowling. It's not like they're saving on John Wall. They're still paying him for what he does. So they're basically adding to the expense because they have to pay Jerome weight as well now. I want to be positive for under 20, but I still see darkness more than light. So it's hard. I overstand, Martin. I overstand. We've been here before and it burned me before. So it's hard when you're, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over. So. But now I tell you, I forgot insane. <laughs> but the, the way me see it, I, at least I've seen players and I like, the, you know, I like the players. But jobs for the boys. No, no, no. I mean, like for the for the men then, for the coaches. Like Fuzzy need three jobs because the pay of one job can't sustain, you know, it can't, it can't make anything work. You know what I mean? Yeah, so not for the players. For the for the when I said boys, I meant I, I really meant to say men, the coaches. Like they need multiple jobs. Mindset, bless up, you know. Respect, man. Respect for being here, bro. You don't know you're gonna like up the video and thing. So yeah, so basically, people, you know, the top two in each group are gonna go through to the quarterfinals, and because because I like to look at all these things. Today, when I was writing everything down, I'm already looking at potential second round matchups and things. So, you know, we're in group A. Now, if we win the group, we'll play the third place team from either group B or group C. If we come, if we finish, um, if we finish third in group A and qualify, we'll play the winner from group B. And if we finish second in the group, we'll play the winner from group C. So 
basically, if we come, if we finish second in the group, we have a, we have a big chance to play maybe Mexico in the second round. And remember, people, we'd have to win one game. Just like the last time, we'll have to win the quarterfinal game to make the World Cup. So, um, yeah, people, it's going to be tough, man. USA first game, they're, they're going to have a stock squad full of, full of professional quality. Um, so we'll really have to, you know, be well prepared and focused on the day to keep them out for 90 minutes. Um, it should be a really, really tough matchup for us. The second game, Costa Rica, um, you know, one of the teams that got through automatically to this round. Um, you know, I'm curious to see what they look like. They, they have been going through a bit of a transformation on the senior team level, uh, trying to bring in some new players. Recently exported a player over to where Shamar Nicholson is loaned away from in Moscow, and he's been doing really well over there. Um, so I'm just curious to see that next phase they have coming through. Uh, they look pretty good at the U17, um, the last U17, as far as Costa Rica. So, you know, they're a team that always is dangerous. Um, but we tend to have a pretty decent record against Costa Rica at the senior level, at least. Um, and at the U20 level, it's it's not that bad against them as well. So, you know, that's a game where I think if we really want to get it out of the group, we're going to have to get some kind of positive result out of that second game against Costa Rica. Um, you know, of course, with it being a, 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 you know, ranking system for the best place, best third place, you know, goal difference, goal scored, all of these things will come into play. So, you know, we really have to take our chances in this tournament if we want to get through. And we really have to keep it as tight as we can at the back you know, try to avoid the big balloon scores so that the goal difference can stay respectable. Um, and then when we have our chances against the likes of, like, Cuba, we're really going to need those three points if we want to get a whole group. So, you know, um, the way I see it, people will get our sternest test in the beginning, which I think could help us. Um, sometimes, a lot of times in these tournaments, we tend to look a little bit better as the tournament goes along. Um didn't didn't quite see that in the qualifiers as much. I thought the I thought the last game wasn't wasn't really part particularly our best performance the last time. Um, but I'm hopeful that you know once we get that first game out of the way, keep the score respectable in it. You know, I, I would be a fool to think we're gonna win that game. But if we can nick a draw, you know, keep it close, one nil, two nil. You know, something low scoring like that, I think it would be a good start. Um, and then Costa Rica, we need to get a positive result. We cannot lose that second game to Costa Rica. We need to go into that Cuba game with at least a point on the board, um, preferably three. That would be great. Um, and then the Cuba game, we got to get three points as well. So, um, yeah, it's 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 a, it's going to be an uphill task, people. We have a lot of question marks right now. Um you know, as I said before, Jerome Waite being the head coach, having other engagements currently, JPL going into the playoffs. Um, I believe his first leg of that should be on the 22nd and then the second leg on the 28th, if I'm not mistaken. So he has those two legs, which we'll be watching closely, people. Um, I don't wish bad for your coach, Waite, but the U20 boys need you. We, we need this preparation to go correctly. Um Every youth tournament we have been here, so I've been here many times before. Yeah, man. First two games gonna be tough. That's 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 truth. That's truth, Stefan. Very very tough. Amar Fowling, as far as I know, we do not, we do not have any training going on for this. As far as I know, and I could be wrong on that. Anybody that has other info, let me know. Yeah, it seems like we always start out a little slower, man. Like, we take a game for, like, really realize what's at stake. Jamaica has the age old issue at all levels. We can't keep the ball to relieve pressure, and it's not changing. Yeah, mindset, that's that's one of the things we need to break, break out of. I think we got to get more comfortable playing under pressure. Um, it's, the way of the, it's the way of the game now. You have to comf be comfortable to play passes out of pressure. The, the default mechanism can be to just boot the ball up the field big up pastor blake 
respect for being here, Pastor. Yeah, man, we had discussed some U20 championship and we're going to move on into the reggae boys in Europe soon. Yeah, people, so, I mean... Honestly, honestly, people, what what do you think? I mean, is it a is it a we have to take a wait and see approach? See what how the lineup looks. Um, you know what what do you guys think as far as what we need to do to make it to this next through this next phase and into the second round so we have a chance to win that quarterfinal match? You know, me personally, I think the squad needs some serious retooling. Um, and I wanted to actually pull up the squad that we took to the qualifiers on screen really quickly and just go through some of the players and, and who I believe, you know, we'll probably still be seeing in this next window or or at least who I, who I, who I comfort, comfortably think should be there um, for the next window. Let's see here. So uh, let's see. Yes, people, if you haven't already, please smash the like button, uh, share the video around, let some more people know that we are doing a live stream. And of course, if you are watching this on the replay, definitely drop your like, leave your comments in the comment section, and we can continue the conversation there. So this right here, people, on screen is, of course, the under-20 championship, uh, well, the qualifier squad uh, that was announced back when we had the tournament in St. Kitts. So, of course, we had the three goalkeepers, Akeem Bernard, Joshua Grant, and Tawain Lynch. Um, for me, people, of those goalkeepers, I'll probably be keeping one. Um, let me see. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so they did have, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. Okay, so they got 21 players. Okay, so you get a squad of 21. All right, so of these three goalkeepers, I am probably going to keep um, Lynch. <laughs> Duclan said they'll be removing the unattached players. Yeah, uh, that was one of the few times where I was on Mr. Butler's side in, in the argument there. I did not understand why it couldn't just say Phoenix on there. I thought that was very, very silly on their part. Yeah, I think I think it's really tough to handicap this group, Stefan, before knowing who is gonna be there. But you know, if if I am just going through based on what I know, the players I think we have coming in, um, I think Tawain Lynch is probably the one keeper that probably definitely keeps his place. If we're gonna take three keepers, I would potentially have Grant in there as well, just just due to the fact that he's so young. Um, I think the experience can help him, and I believe that we have a keeper coming in as well. So that would probably be the three keepers. So I don't think Bernard will make the championship squad. Tawain Lynch are definite for me. Grant probably a maybe, just depending on who is coming in. Um, but if Grant and Lynch is there, I'm totally okay. Um, defenders, Romaine Blake. So Blake for me is a tough one. I think with his experience of being there before, um, you know, it's it almost like you want to put him back on there for sure. But I thought he was very, very subpar in the in the qualifying stage. Um, thought he just took too many liberties on the ball, took too many chances with it. Um, even even his defending itself, you know, just seemed to not be positionally aware at times. Um, just just wasn't really. I didn't really like what I saw from him. I thought he looked better in the previous one, personally. Um, so Romain Blake for me is one that going into this out. Well, if I looked at this team before that qualifier, I would say, yes, he's one I would think would definitely be on the next one. But for right now, I'm going to just put an asterisk by Blake. Um, I'm leaning towards a yes, but I want to just keep going through the list and just keep thinking about it. Michael Forbes, for me, um, highly touted by many. Um, but I think the kid is very, very raw. I think he needs some more development. Definitely, you know, the height and the size and the build, all pluses for him. But I think with that, we need the football as well. And I don't believe that he, to me, looked like the level was a, a bit above him. He looked to be behind on a lot of the players, um, tried to get bail himself out with athleticism. And that's really what got him into trouble and got him carded. Um, so for me, Michael Forbes, I think he has a future. But for now, I don't know if I'm going to uh, bring him to this tournament. So I'm going to say a no for Michael Forbes for me. Um, Adrian Reed Jr., Player I have a lot of time for. Um, 
again, someone I was expecting a bit more from in the qualifiers. Um, but I do like his leadership qualities. Uh, I think for me, for right now, I'm going to say a yes for Adrian Reed. Uh, same goes for Ronaldo Barrett, listed here as a defender, played left back for majority of the time. But, um, you know, I think as a midfielder, central midfielder, whether it's CDM or box to box, I think he definitely has a role. Um, I think he's a really good player. Um, for me, Barrett is a yes. I think he, I think he, he does not look out of, you know, out of his depth at this level. I hear Dixon. I thought did really well in the games he played. I was pleasantly surprised. I thought he played better than I thought he would actually, um, but I still think that maybe. Um, we can probably do a little better than I hear in terms of some aspects of the experience um, and just that commanding presence that I think we might need at this next level. So for me, I hear is a no. Let me just check in with the squad. The squad will be 20, therefore two. So, so they allowed one extra at the qualifiers because this is 21 on here. So I'm just wondering... If it's two goalkeepers, then I'm not taking Grant and Lynch. It'll just be Lynch. Because I'm pretty sure I'm I'm almost certain we have a goalkeeper coming in. About seven players from the first round, I believe, merit a place requiring all overseas born players and whisper the standard chance. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, I did like what I saw from Lynch as well. Duklan is a Blake all the way, no question. No, that's that's how I felt before the qualifiers, Duklan. But I mean, he just didn't look good in the qualifiers. We have to we have to be honest. He didn't play well. Um, next player on the list. So, all right. So so far, people, I have Tawain Lynch, and I have Adrian Reed and Barrett. Um, Blake is still on my fence for right now. So that's three that I have so far. I hear Dixon. I was impressed, but I'm gonna say I know. George Grant didn't get enough time. Um, I don't. I don't think he. I just he didn't get enough time. I can't really. I can't really say. And I didn't see him play much in the Trinidad side of things either. Um, Horsley McKay is an interesting one. One that I thought looked really good in the in the games in Trinidad, and then in the when Blake joined the team for the qualifiers. Blake went into central defense with Forbes and Horsley McKay played right back. Um, he came off in the second half of the first game and did not play again after that, which was a strange one for me um, because I thought the player looked really good at center back. So I was very surprised when Forbes got the red card and I hear Dixon came in and not McKay playing in the center. That was very strange. Um, so because I don't want to be biased about this one, I want to say yes, but I'm going to put an asterisk by McKay as well. So I have two maybes so far, Blake and McKay, and I have three yeses, Adrian Reed, Ronaldo Barrett, and Tawain Lynch. So let's move into the midfielders now. So Alexander Bicknell, um, one that was at last U20 as well, um, what was not that impressive in the, in the qualifiers. I thought he looked unfit, actually, just didn't really look up to the pace and the speed of the game. Um, so for me, it's a no. I don't think that, you know, I think with Barrett moving to his rightful spot in midfield, I don't see where Bicknell warrants a spot. Um, the other midfielders here, Makai Welch, definite yes for me. Thought he was one of the most impressive players in the qualifiers for Jamaica. Um, unfortunately, he got those two yellow cards in the second game. Um, but I think his, his class still showed throughout the tournament otherwise than those two yellows. And I think moving forward, he's one that we need to continue to use in the midfield. Uh, Christopher Ainsworth, a player going into the tournament, I would have had a definite yes by. Um, thought he looked a bit lackluster attacking-wise, but I thought he looked a bit more comfortable when he was back in the left-back role and he could drive forward from deeper. Um, so just based on the fact that in the last qualifier, we really were struggling to feel a left-back, I'm going to say it's a yes for me, for Ainsworth. I think he's a competent enough left back to warrant a spot, even if we have some replacements coming in to play further up the pitch on that side. Um, I would still have him in the team as a, as a left back option. So Ainsworth is a yes for me. So that is one, two, three, four, five yeses so far. Brian Burkett, player that I like, St. George's College done beholding. But I think 
with the players on top to come in, Burkett will struggle to make the final 20. So for me, Burkett is a no, but I like the player. Dustin Cohen, another one that I have a lot of time for. I think in the future, he's going to be a really good player. But I think with some of the names that I've seen to come in, uh, Cohen is another one that I think will struggle to make this team. So I'm going to say no to Cohen. But I do like both of those players, Burkett and Cohen. But I'm going to say a no for this particular tournament. Denzel McKenzie, for me, did not do enough to warrant a place either. Um, you know, there was a lot of hype surrounding him. Um, you know, player that did really well in the Manning Cup, but I thought faded away a bit towards the end, the business end of the competition, when some other players from Mona, I thought, stepped up a bit more. Um, you know, really good from the dead ball, but didn't really show it that much in this tournament, to be honest. Corner kicks weren't great. Free kicks weren't great either. Um, so... Um, look, for me, Denzel McKenzie, I don't believe that he's going to make this, this, well, I don't know if he will or not, but I, I personally would not have him in the, in the next tournament. So Denzel McKenzie is a no for me. Uh, Robina Gordon, on the other hand, he's going to be the one unattached, unattached player that will make this roster as far as I'm concerned. I think he's a good utility player, can play right back, midfield, center back, left back. Um, you know, just a good player, hardworking player, um, you know, don't really hear much fuss about him. Um, you know, his, his camp doesn't really talk about him as much as some of the others, which is a bit strange because I think he does have some potential. Um, so for me, Robina Garden played himself onto this roster to go. So that's my sixth yes. Fabian Reynolds is going to be my seventh yes. I think that Fabian Reynolds has a lot of potential. I think the goal that he scored kind of showed us that. Um, maybe his decision-making needs a lot of work, but have been tracking the player, has been playing in PL2 for Wolves um, and in the U18 league as well from time to time. So, you know, just going to keep watching the player. But for me right now, um, yes, not the strongest yes in the world, but for now, I'm going to say a yes. Um, Ashton Garden, this is one that really 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 was racking my brain over um because i'm thinking seven to nine players probably will make this cut and there'll probably be 10 to 11 10 to 12 new players coming in um so ashton garden was one that was like really close and i think it's gonna just gonna come down to like who we can actually get in what positions we're getting in to see if he actually makes the final cut so i'm gonna say a maybe right now for ashton um, Nick Simmons is another one, I think, in that same boat. Depending on which forwards we actually get to come in, I think we have some quality that would be a little bit better than Simmons' level. But I do think that if we don't get certain players in, Simmons does offer, of all the pool I saw so far, you know, that, that nice big target um, to, to play off of if you have a certain situation in a game and you want a target striker. So Nick Simmons is somebody that I'm going to say maybe, but I'm leaning towards a yes for him. Tyrese Go, um, for me, player that I think has a lot of potential. Um, I just feel like there's going to be some quality coming in that is a little bit above his level right now. Um, so I'm going to say a no for Go, but I do like Tyrese Go as a player. I think he has a has a good future ahead of him. Um, so just to recap, people, Tawain Lynch gets a yes from me for sure. Um, Adrian Reed, Ronaldo Barrett. Uh, Makai Welch makes four, Ainsworth five, Robina Garden six, Fabian Reynolds seven, Kyron Horsley McKay eight, and that's I think that's gonna be my eight people. Oh, sorry. And I'm and I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to take Romain Blake. So that's nine. That's nine yeses, people. Of those nine yeses, I have two that could maybe drop out depending on who we can get in. But I'm going to say that's my nine right now, people. Tawain Lynch, Romain Blake, Adrian Reed, Ronaldo Barrett, Horsley McKay, Makai Welsh, Ainsworth, uh, Robina Garden, Fabian Reynolds. That's going to be my nine for right now.
No, he's not mindset. Too old. Should the youth team be inclusive of more? Yeah, I believe I I, I kind of wish that they could just do away with the quota just to like just get it out of people's minds, even like don't even think about it. Um, look, I I I said today, like, just make it based off of the best players. If it's if it's an all local team, who cares? If it's an all overseas team, who cares? It's all Jamaica at the end of the day. They're going to put on the same jersey, what we love to see. And if they win, we're going to celebrate just the same. So it doesn't matter. Now, is it realistic to think that there would be a 20-man overseas squad? Probably not. But but why? Why can't that be a reality? Why can't it be a reality if it's all local? If they're the best players, I don't care where they come from. You know? I don't care where they're born. As long as they're eligible to play and they have documents and they can, then just do it, you know? Martin, respect for this, you know? Come always forget to ask about them things. Yeah? Like and subscribe to the channel, people. Yeah, man. Where football is spoken about no bias would be difficult to not pick Blake based on his experience. Yes, that, that's what I'm grappling with, Stefan. But his nonchalant approach in the first round left much to be desired. Very true. It's almost like him did feel like we're just going to go on the field and we're going to win. We're not even try. But Blake was who made us qualify to this round. Uh, Duklan, I mean, yes, he... But, so, okay. So, that means that this squad need to play the next round then. If you're going to use that logic, Duklan, like... Blake got us to this round. But I know Blake won play. And Blake made mistakes that could have prevented us from getting to the next round. So if but if you're gonna have that mindset, we can't drop nobody then, Duclan. We have to just take the whole team because they all made us qualify. Do you think CB will make his players available? So I'm saying it is going to Aston Villa U21. Who knows? Well, yeah, I mean, Omar falling. The thing is, you know, any anything to do with this tournament, especially the tournament itself, just due to the dates. There will be no conflict, um, you know, if if the JFF asks for the players, if if it is happens to get to and make it into Aston Villa's system, you know, the, the Aston Villa will release him to us. Bless up, Travis. Bless up. Bless up, Fresh. Simmons no for you. Yeah, no, I didn't put Simmons either. Um, I think I think we can get a get better target striker options, but he's only I think he's only 17, so he's got time. He he probably could do the next cycle as well. Not sure, Makai. Yeah, look, it's I am really basing it fresh off of what I saw in the Trinidad matches. Because I thought he was the best center back in those matches, but Everybody that talked about those matches was raving about Michael Forbes. And I'm like, I guess I'm just watching a different game. I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it. All I see is Forbes chasing after people because he's out of position. What about I hear Dixon? Impress me. Impress me. But I'd, I feel like we can we have we have better quality that we could get and we will get. But no, no knock against the kid. He, he was impressive to me. As a matter of fact, he played better than Blake. In the games he played with Blake. Yeah, that, that's why I say the nine the nine thing could be seven. I, I don't I don't see based on what I've heard more than 13 new players coming in. And 13, I think, would be like max. I'm thinking it's gonna be like 11, 10. Um, so it could be even more than the nine I chose that stay. But if if I had a choice, that would be my nine. Um, that I would keep, that I think, you know, I would be okay with keeping. Where is it? Both are youth. <laughs> Coach will never see it. That's why he got benched after the cards. Yeah, no, I, I feel like sometimes the the noise of the masses can get in people's ears, you know? Mm-hmm. Because no, I never heard anybody saying that Horsley McKay played well in the Trinidad games, like who who discuss football and these mediums and everything. They were all just kind of brushing his performances under the rug. And I'm like, but he's the one that looked like the one back there in the defense. 
But as I say, you know, that's why football is a great thing. You know, you watch a hundred people watch the game and you ask them how it go, and you hear, you know, 50 different things. Maybe half of them sound the same and the other half tell you all kind of things happen in the game. So just depends, people. Just depends. That's why, you know, a lot, with all these platforms that talk about football in the space, it's not bad to watch a few of them because if you just watch one, you might turn a madman, you know? You might turn to a madman. If you watch the, the wrong one for you, you know? Yeah, people, so that is my nine that I think can potentially get on the next squad. As I said before, I, I would be okay if that was only seven of the nine I said, but I think it's just going to be, as as Lanzi pointed out here, you know, based on what positions and stuff we are going to add and who is coming. So, absolutely, Stefan, right? There's something, maybe there's something to that. We need to start to look for the players in the camp that they aren't trying to highlight. Yeah, maybe maybe we're onto something with that there, Stefan. Maybe the ones that don't have the hype are the ones that really should have it. Because I like the player, man. I liked him last year in the Mona team and this year, and then he looked good from, to me in the in the Jamaica team as well. Just solid, you know. No hype. Just keep his head down, play the game, simple. Yeah, man. I I, I like the kid. I like the kid. I like the kid. All right, so that's pretty much it about the U20 people. Of course, this is something that we're going to have to watch and track and progress um, and see what happens. As I said, big dates to remember. Jerome Witt and not wishing ill on Tivoli Gardens or none of your fans. But Fuzzy, do the under 20 a favor since you couldn't re make a reach last time. Beat Jerome Witt in the first round there, please. And thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, people. So the next thing that we want to touch on, people, is the games today that our reggae boys played in Europe. So let's see here. All right. First things first. Yeah, people. So we had some games in the Europa League and the Conference League. And first and foremost, before we break down all the games, we just want to check on our reggae boys that played today. So first one was our Captain Jamaica, Mikel Antonio. I know he doesn't captain the team, but it's a nice nickname for him, I think. Mikel Antonio, today they played Barry Leverkusen and people. This was like a, a training match between the offense and the defense. Look at this attack momentum, people. You see this stat right here? I want you to read what it says. They use a complex algorithm to bring you very accurate insight into the course of the game. Peaks on the graph are showing the pressure of a team throughout the match. So the further away from the middle, more pressure. All right, so that is explained if you never know what that means. Look at this. Look at this. The man them basically living on them half. Look at the stats, people. 73% to 27. 33 shots to 1. Wow. 13 on target to 1 on target. 10 corners to 1. 2 big chances. It's actually not so bad, you know, with all those shots and possession to only give up two big chances. One counter, and that counter was basically Mikel Antonio. A brilliant run. 20 shots inside the box. Fabianski made nine saves. Wow. That's crazy. Look at the passes, man. 743, 91%. Barely go long in the game. So, people, when you talk about domination in a match, that is it. Leverkusen showing why they haven't lost a game. But let's check in with Antonio, people. Let 
Yeah, man, Omar Fallen. We soon get to that, man. We soon get to that. The three piece did hot. I think it's a spicy one, them get. <laughs> All right, so let's just look at Mikel Antonio in detail, people. So this is his heat map. Um, as you can see, had a lot of touches in his own half, in his own box, even had one kick. He kicked one off the line at one point as well. Well, he was back there about to touch it, and the, the guy, Suchek, I think, got it in front of him. But yeah, had to do some defensive work, you know, played on the left a little bit, center circle. I mean, he was everywhere, had a touch on the edge of the box, couple touches in the box as well. But let's look at what he did. He played 90 minutes, so a full 90 for Mikel, so very good. Um, not often that he goes through the full 90 anymore, but that's good to see him good doing that one today. Um, didn't have any goals or assists, of course. Uh, he was one for one on his dribbles attempted, and that dribble was a very, very effective one. Picked it up on the left side, dribbled Jonathan Tar for pace, just put his head down. Actually, I haven't seen Antonio do that in a while, where he just literally, no body faint, no body, nothing, just push and just go. And he was gone. Um, and he has set up Kudus at the top of the 18, and Kudus just could not get the right contact on it to score. But very, very good run from Antonio show the speed that he still has he had 27 touches on the day lost the ball 10 times he was 8 for 16 on his passing for 50 percent he had one key pass which was that pass to kudus um he was five of eight on ground duels so good there one of three on aerials uh three fouls and he was fouled three times on defense he had one clearance one block shot and one tackle so a 7.0 for michael antonio very good performance from him um, obviously, his team needed him to do a lot of defensive work, and he was more than willing to do so. And I'm just happy to see him getting through 90 minutes, looking strong. Um, yeah, he's uh, looking to gain back his fitness as he goes each game. And long may that continue, people. Hope that he can just stay fit, stay fit, stay fit till the end of the season, help West Ham try to turn this around next week, but it's going to be a very, very, very tough time for them to do that against this on-fire Leverkusen team. So next, people, let's check on our exiled or I don't know what you call it, our reggae boy on a, on a self-imposed hiatus. I tell you, bro, that's how the game look, man. FIFA... An amateur, not even semi pro. All right, so let's check in with our brethren Leon. As you can see, they won the game 2 1 against Lil. They were up 2 0, and then Deakita got one back in the 84th minute. So this game was definitely not as one sided as you can see. Lil had a lot of the momentum for large parts of the game. Um, let's just look at the stats overall. Um, Lil had had the better expected goals on the day, more possession. Shots were pretty much even, 12 to 11, but Lil had more shots on target. Um, Villa had more corners, 7 to 3. Uh, look at that for Lil, people. Four big chances on the day, and they, they missed three of them. Villa had one big chance and converted it. Two counters for Lil. So, yeah, I mean, Lil, Lil outpassed them. They were more accurate with their passes. Um, Lil, you know, Lil had a lot of the play in this game. I mean, Aston Villa basically converted their chance that they got, and they were just more clinical on the day, to be honest. But let's look at Leon Bailey's game in detail. This is his heat map, people, so... Did put in a shift in his own half. Um, got a few touches back there as well, but the majority of his touches came in this area. Um, you see him on the left side as well. That's where his assist came from, from the corner kick when they played the shot. Uh, but this is his game by the numbers. 74 minutes played. Uh, had one assist. He did set up McGinn's goal after a short corner. Um, 38 touches for him on the day. He lost the ball eight times and not bad. 23 of 26 for 88%. Very good on his passing accuracy. He had two key passes as well. 
Um, one of those was for the assist. He was 0 for 1 on his crosses. He had one shot on target, one off target. He only attempted one dribble and was unsuccessful. He was 2 for 4 on his ground duels, did not try any aerial duels. He was fouled once and defensive actions. He had one clearance and he did make one tackle. So a 7.4 for Leon Bailey, very good performance. Did get on the goal assist chart as well with his assist to McGinn. Um, did have a decent chance in the box as well in the first half. Fake the shot on the right foot, cut back to the left, but could not keep his shot down as he tried to curl it into the far post. Um, but overall, a good, a good, good display from Leon. Um, and they will take that 2 1 lead back to Lille. But I will say that, um, you know, Lille should feel pretty confident that they might be able to turn this around just based on the balance of play in this one today. Of course, you see the Canadian Jonathan David led the line, um, had a 6.4, I believe, it's because he missed. Uh, no, they didn't register that as a big chance. He had a really good chance in the um in the first half, actually, when it was 1-0 to equalize, but could not finish it. But yeah, Jonathan David, people, one that I had high hopes, hopes for a few years ago. Um, still doing decent, but hasn't quite kicked on like I thought he would this season, to be honest. And even last season was a little bit down as well. But not, not doing too badly. 16 goals in the league. Um, so, yeah. Not too bad at all, but I think he's maybe not as high on some people's list around Europe as he was a few years ago. Um, so a lot of people have referenced this game already. Uh, let's just check in back with the chat real quick. Pastor said, Captain Jamaica coming back to full fitness at the right time. Yes, yes. Um, today, today was the fittest I've seen him look. I mean, like, he really looked you know, somewhat like himself, you know, like that run he made on the left was really powerful, man. And yeah, he had a good game today, I thought. Um, yeah, he was, he was tidy in possession and when he was supposed to do something positive, he did it. So yeah, I thought Bailey played well today. All right, people. So as I said, people were referencing this from early on in the stream. So let's just go ahead and get to it, people. So this is the Liverpool-Atalanta match, people. As you can see, that's not a typo. The game was at Anfield, and they did receive a hot three-piece. Uh, Gianluca Scamacca with two goals, and Pasalic, the Atalanta veteran, with the third to make it 3-0 in the first leg. So, um, as you can see, Liverpool had more of the play, as you would expect in Anfield, but um, the Atalanta team... You know, despite three goals, really wasn't even that clinical. They could have had more. Um, so it was just a bad day at the office for Liverpool in terms of chances conceded, as you can see. Expected goals, Atalanta still had the edge. Uh, ball possession, Liverpool had the majority of it, 70 to 30. Shots, 19 to 11 um, overall. But look at the shots on target, people. More clinical on the day, 7 to 5 in favour of Atalanta. Um, corners pretty even, big chances. You see that, people? Seven big chances for Atalanta, and they missed five of them. So it could have easily been more people. Um, Liverpool, to be fair, did have three big chances and missed all of them. I know Nunes was guilty for one for sure. Um, but yeah, dominated pass wise possession wise but in the decisive moments in both boxes Atalanta was definitely the better team today um, let's look at the lineups and see what kind of team Klopp put out today so he went with Keller in goal um, Joe Gomez Konate Virgil and Simikas back from injury McAllister Endo Curtis Jones Harvey Elliott Darwin Nunes and Cody Gakpo so of course, as you can see, people, no Diaz on the left, no Salah on this wing. These two normally start. Nunes has been starting. Curtis Jones potentially could start over Soboslai, but okay, Soboslai might have been there. Um, Andy Robertson didn't start. And Gomez has been starting, but at left back, so I can't really count Gomez as a bench player. Um, 
and then Konate and Van Dyke is probably their best centre back partnership, and they had their best keeper available in the goal. So, um, you know, I've heard maybe people saying Klopp rotated too much. For me, this is fine. This is a team that Klopp would put out if he had to rotate some players. There's nothing wrong with this team, people. So, um, yeah, I, I just feel like on the day. Atalanta just came with their game plan and, and they, they did it to perfection. Zapacosta had his times down that right flank. That's where the first goal came from. Um, Cope Miners was a terror all throughout the game. The Catalier did well. Skamaka was there to finish his chances, held the ball up well. They just had a good game plan and it worked out for them on the day. And of course, Musso had a big game in goal to Argentine. So, um, yeah, is this is this a sign, people, of, of of things to come for Liverpool? I don't know. A Curtis Jones is the Jamaican. Uh, Demo, if you look at the title, um, actually, no, I don't have it in the title. But if you watch the beginning of the video, I said that I would be talking about all the games in the Europa League and the Conference League today because. You know, I know you don't really watch my channel that much because you have others that you like more, maybe. I don't know. But if if you had watched my last episode, um, I did happen to do a prediction of all the games. So I have to look back at my predictions and see if I got any right or wrong. Or So that's what I'm doing now. And also, this is a football channel, and this might have been the biggest football news of the day. So... Just enjoy the conversation and add to it if you wish. <laughs> Fowling said, Fowling eat a three-piece, man. All right, so let's see. What did I have for this game? So I said Liverpool was going to win 4-1, people. So I got that dreadfully wrong. Um, <clears throat> let's look at the rest of the games. All right, so I said Leverkusen was going to win 2-1. So I got the score wrong, but I got that right. Benfica, Benfica Marseille, I got that perfectly right. I said 2-1. Milan, Roma, I went for a nil-all draw, but it was 1-0 to Roma. And Liverpool, Atalanta, as I said before, I got totally wrong. Let's look at the rest of the games. Fenerbahce, I said Fenerbahce was going to go to Greece and win 2-1, which didn't happen. It was 3-2 to Olympiaco, so I got that wrong. Um, I said Paulson was going to win at home 3-2, but that was a nil-all draw. Aston Villa-Lille, I predicted 3-2, but it was 2-1, so I was close, but I got that right. And Bruges and Pauk, I said 2-0, but it was 1-0. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4. I got 4 right, and I got 1 game totally right with the score and everything. So, yeah, that, that was not too bad, people. All right, next thing I wanted to do, people, was... Uh, well, actually, before we move on from that, people... Skamaka, the man who could not score for West Ham could have had a hat-trick. Should have had a hat-trick, to be honest. Jason said he's going to talk about how our Jamaicans did. LOL must be Curtis Jones. <laughs> No, I already spoke about Bailey and I spoke about Antonio. And then after I was done with those things, I went straight to the Liverpool game because it's it's football news, you know. Not many times do Liverpool get turned over 3-0 at the mighty Anfield. Yeah, man, Dima. Take your beat, man. And I bother with no BT madness, man. The man rotate like every other good coach this time of year. And it'll just get beat. One city, one man you. So, Colin Quest, so if you like city and man you, that no work. That's coming like me forward and said Spurs and Arsenal all the way. That don't that, that, that make sense. Fix up that, man. Or you can only choose one of those teams. The red one or the blue one. So yeah, people, based on based on the first legs, um, what do you guys think about these ties? Do you think Liverpool can overcome the deficit? 
over in Italy. No away goals, so that's good for Liverpool. So them just really need to just, you know, score three goals and don't let them score to send it to extra time. Liverpool does have a 5 0 result against them from 2020 in the Champions League. But I don't think Sadio Mane is coming back for the next game. Um, Firmino either. Milner. Hendo. So hopefully this version of them can do it. What do you think, Dima? Easy winnings. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there were there were t there were times in the game where if you guys just took a chance, the game could have been different. But I think this game, while it was inflated, the amount of goals and big chances and all that, you know, you guys haven't been giving up seven big chances a game. But you guys have been giving up more chances than you normally would, you know as a team for like a long while now and teams either haven't been scoring or you guys have been scoring enough to make it not matter so you know i've said all along while i love liverpool's running i think out of all the defenses yours is the one i trust the least Yeah, I think I think you I think you guys had a lot of actions that could have been chances that maybe didn't turn into chances. I think they 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 had more actual chances in the game. Like something that, you know, the ball is on the attacker's foot and he's shooting to your goal in your box. You know, so Bradley Diaz, Jata, Sabo, Robertson will all be back for that. Okay. So, I heard you earlier, Dima, saying that, um, you know, you have multiple competitions and he had to rotate. So, so you guys are not going to have a game in the Premier League the next week after, after the game on Thursday? Are you more business because you guys down 3-0? Or, you know, I don't understand. Why more rotate again? Because I'm presuming him going to want those guys that you're naming there to play on Sunday. So they're going to all play on Thursday too. Let me know. Let me know. So what do you guys think, people? Will Sam have a chance to come back? Will Liverpool turn it around? I think the Milan-Roma game is still up in the air. Conference League side. Really, all these ties are still up for grabs. Lille showed me enough to, to make me think that they could go to France and turn that tie over as well. This game was tight. This game was also tight, even though I like Fiorentina at home. And Fenerbahce will be a raucous atmosphere on that second leg. So pretty much everything to play for. This one game that's a bit lopsided, I still wouldn't put it past Liverpool to at least make a fight of it. Um, so, yeah, I, I think all these games will be worth watching next week for sure. I think we have to go strong at the start, get the job done, and rest players. Okay, so... So hopefully Crystal Palace, even if them can't beat Uno or take points from Uno, them just make the game difficult enough so that all them man there for play. We say where's I'm dead. Stranger things have happened. No Bowen and West Ham is tough, man. They were it's, it was like a big hole in the team today without Bowen. Now, man, the, the narrative will be different, you know? Yeah, man, Shabby. Shabby Alonso is definitely a top coach. There's no question about it. 
No question about it. The man is going to make Bayer Leverkusen so much money as a club. Because when, when the team them start to raid them for the players them, because Verts is steadily increasing to like a hundred million player. Bonif Boniface could go for about 50, 60. Um when name the, the striker chic theme valley just going up by the week. A lot of them players going to get money, man. Any player that is young enough for a move, I know Tap Sober for years was going to leave. Him probably going to leave now for a bag of money. Even though they might all stay. Got them, you know, Champions League next year and defend the title. But I think Xabi Alonso will be the next Real Madrid coach whenever that comes available. Especially since he never took the Liverpool job. Well, Grim Grimaldo, Grimaldo, they just got him. They just got him in the off season. Um, and Frimpong is yeah. Everybody's talking about Frimpong. So everybody, like almost every club we can think of, linked to Frimpong at this point. They could. I know them in the Pokal. Think them reach the semis or the finals. Yeah, I, I don't see where some. I mean, the only way is if everybody come back fit by next week and them score in like the first ten minutes, because you know that that stadium is a decent atmosphere when it get rocking. And you have to put some respect on West Ham. I mean, Moyes found a way last season to just keep winning in that damn tournament and then win the damn trophy. So you never know. But that it's very, it's going to be very tough. I wouldn't bet on it. Yes, he came from Benfica. He was there for years. Matter of fact, how old is Grimaldo? Because I know him just go, but both as. As you said, both of their wing backs are like flawless. Oh, 28. Okay. Yeah, how is he not starting for Spain? I think he might have been hurt the last window. Because I saw Cucurella playing left back. I was like, what? So I'm just getting debut. Look how the man them. Oh, he wasn't even there. He was free. Look at that. Them could sell him and make. So much money in the half season. Cause I'm at 28, they better sell him now. And Frimpang is a lot younger than that. Yeah, 23. Yeah, I'm just start play for Holland with the Yeah, October. Another Man City youth. 11 million in 2021. Probably get sold for about. Not even sure where him get sold for now. Them have him at 52 on here. Damn. Playmaking. Wing back. Yeah, man. Any team will play back three system. Good wing back that. Yeah, that's true, Hot Chili. That's true. Benfica did have a nice run last year. It's quarters them did reach. Or them they just met the 16. I think you might be right about that, Benfica making that, you know. Cause I remember Rafa Silva last season, I do some, you know, knock out them. Good ball at that too. Yeah, but Bar Leverkusen are the real deal, people. Can't go around it. Alright, but one thing we didn't want to do as well, just because I never got a chance to talk about it before. Um let me go to the Champions League right quick. Yeah, Champions League matches. All right. 
so the next day the games that i didn't talk to you guys about there were two on the day barcelona and psg played a great match it was 3-2 to barca as you can see um they went ahead one nil through rafinha and then right in when the second half started psg came out and fired goals from dembele and vitinha two minutes apart and then Rafinha found another one in the 62nd. And then Christensen with his first touch off the bench scored from a header from Gundogan to make it 3-2. So um, this is how the teams lined up. Actually, first, let's look at the stats. Uh, Barcelona won the XG match. PSG actually had more ball possession, which is surprising to me. 59% to 41 Um <clears throat> 18 shots to 15 PSG, but Barcelona had one more on target, 7 to 6. Corners pretty even, 7 to 5 for Paris. Four big chances created from Barca, only one missed. PSG had two created and missed one. PSG hit the woodwork twice. PSG had more of the ball, but still had three counter-attack shots and attacks. Um... Passing, PSG had more, better percentage, and yeah. So that was the stats for the game, people, pretty much. Let's look at the lineups and who played. So this is how PSG came out in a 4-3-3. They had Donnarumma in goal, Marquinhos at right back. That's how it was? I don't remember that. Marquinhos at right back, Lucas Hernandez and Beraldo in the middle, and Nuno Mendes at left back. Kang in Lee, Vitinha, and Fabian Ruiz in midfield. Usman Dembele, Marco Asensio to the middle, and Kylian Mbappe. And then Barcelona had a 4 3 3 as well. They had Ter Stegen in goal, Joao Cancelo, Pau Gobar, City Youngster, Ronald Araujo, Jules Kunde playing in Paris, where he, well, I don't know if he's from Paris, but playing home in France, Ilke Gundogan, Sergio Roberto, and Frankie de Jong in midfield, just back from injury, Rafinha, Robert Lewandowski, and Yamin Lamal, the young starlet on the right. So that's how the team started out, people. Um, Asensio, I think, only lasted a half. He was actually pretty poor in my estimation. Um, was kind of surprised he got to start through the middle, but... I know they don't have uh, Randall Colomuani right now. And I don't believe that Enrique really likes um, Gonzalo Ramos very much. So as you can see, at halftime, he brought on Barcola. That moved Mbappe to the middle, and Barcola was playing off the right. And Dembele switched from the right to the left for the second half. So Dembele did get his goal from that side. Um, but first and foremost, there was a goal from Rafinha in the first half. Uh, um, basically, I want to say it was a corner, but I know it bounced out to him and he had a good clean finish on his wrong foot, the right foot, to the roof of the net to make it 1-0. Then the second half, Dembele, after some pressure from PSG to start the half, um, chopped it back because, you know, he's, he has two feet. You don't know what he's going to use. So he shaped like he was going to shoot with the right, chopped it to the left, blasted it past first again um, to make it two or one one all. And then right after that, nice move from PSG, some slick passing. Vitinha made a run, late run into the box. Quick control with the left, quick toe poke, finished with the right foot to un unbalance the keeper to make it 2-1. And then Rafinha scored a brilliant goal after a brilliant two pass from Gundogan, I believe it was, no, it was Pedri, who had just come on, um, played a brilliant pass, time to perfection, one touch finish with the outside of the left foot from Rafinha to make it 2 all, and then as I said before, Christensen off the bench to finish to make it 3-2 on the day, so a big, big, big result for Barcelona there, one that I did not predict because I had that game being a nil all draw, so I was totally wrong there, overthinking it. But that one was another classic people, but it was 3-2 to Barcelona. And I must say, both teams looked really good on the day. Both look worthy of getting to the next round, to be honest. Um, I do think that PSG's uh, defense line 
looked a bit shaky, especially um, Baraldo, the youngster from Brazil. He had a tough time um, kind of getting to the pace of the game. I thought he committed a lot of fouls, got a yellow card, uh, didn't really look that great in the game. I've seen him play much better games than that. Lucas Hernandez, kind of surprising to see him playing center back in this in this system. But really and truly, Nuno Mendes spent most of his time up the pitch. So it easily could have just been a back three on the day. Um, but, you know, when they dropped into a shell, they didn't get into the four. But Mendes spent a lot of his time attacking down the left. Um, but for me, the, this this second leg, I think, is still all going to be up in the air. I think if you look at Kylian Mbappe's performance, especially in this first leg, it was one of his quieter knockout stage games I can remember. Um, you know, played the full game, but just didn't really offer much of a threat. I mean, he did have three key passes, so he was still involved. But, you know, I just don't remember him putting his usual stamp on the game like he could. Dembele was a lot more active, especially in the opponent's box. And Barcola even um, looked more lively than him in the second half as well. So, um, you know, you have to think that Mbappe is going to show up a lot bigger in this return leg. Who knows, maybe this is the, the Real Madrid you know, sealing his love for Real Madrid by having a big performance to knock out Barca of the Champions League. So, you know, we'll see what he has up his sleeve next Tuesday, but I'm expecting him to come up with a much, much better performance in the second leg. And then in the last match of the quarterfinal round that we haven't looked at yet, it was Dortmund versus... Results... Dortmund versus Atletico. And this one I predicted a 2 1 to Atletico. And wow, look at that, people. 2 1 to Atletico. So I'm a genius, as you know. I'm just kidding. But yeah, I got this one right, people. 2 1 to Atletico Madrid. Um, let's look at the stats right quick. So Atletico won the match and the expected goals. So they had 2.18 to 0.87. Um, Dortmund had a lot more possession at 67%. But you know, with um Simeone teams, he doesn't really care about that. He places a lot more emphasis on what we do with the possession, not how much they possess it. So they had 14 shots to their 12 with all, with all that less possession, 9 on target to Dortmund's 4. Um, <clears throat> both had 8 corner kicks on the day. Uh, Atletico created 5 big chances and missed 3, so it could have been bigger margins. Three chances created by three big chances created by Dortmund, and they missed two of them. And they hit the woodwork twice on those big chances, actually. Um, Atletico had one counter that led to a shot, and of course, Dortmund with the more possession had a lot more passes and were more accurate on their passes on the day. So, yeah, 2 1 to Atletico Madrid people. Um, didn't score a goal in the game, but Antoine Griezmann was immense in this one. Yeah, I didn't even look at these ratings yet, but I could have, I, I knew he would have a high rating. 8.4 for Griezmann. Just one of those players I think is like an unsung hero when it comes to football. Um, definitely was an integral part of France winning the World Cup. You know, obviously Mbappe is the big, shiny, fancy star, but I think um, Griezmann is definitely the glue when it comes to a lot of the teams he's on. France and Atletico Madrid may not have the guardiest numbers like some others, but just a player that I'm sure all his teammates love playing with. Um, Dortmund, you know, Sancho probably was their brightest light on the day, as you can see, based on that and based on what I saw in the in the highlights and the, the parts of the game I did watch. Um, Jaden Sancho and Ryerson really did well on this right hand side. Um, everybody else besides the keeper. Um, I would say, you know, didn't really do the best. And even the keeper for this 8.1, you know, he must have he must have had a lot, yeah, seven saves because I know he must have had an error that led to a goal or they didn't count him with that. Yeah, he had a terrible in the in the build up to the first goal. Him and a defender just had a you know silly, silly play. I think it was Matson. Um, yeah, and it caused one of the goals, but 2-1 to Atletico, but you know they have the yellow wall to go face in a week's time. So nothing, nothing really can be said about that being over yet. So yeah, people, that's all the UCL matches. Um, 
So I did predict what? Only one out of the four UCL matches correct. But I did a lot better on the other ones in the conference and the Europa. I got four right out of the eight. So yeah, people, gonna keep documenting these and see how much we improve, how many, how many perfect we can get. I got a few this week in this round, so that's good, that's good, that's good. Remember, people, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like button. Um, if you're watching this on the replay, people, make sure to do the same. And make sure to leave some comments in the comment section so you can ask me any questions about anything that you see while you watch the video. And I will definitely get back to it and respond in quick fashion. So, yeah, people, that's about it. That's about it. Um, just wanted to go through and touch on the U20 group stage since we got a chance to see who we're going to be facing in that um definitely going to keep our eye out on the progress you know how is the camps looking you know do we have a firm list for the players we want to use um you know all of those questions we kind of really need to be getting answered here pretty soon uh, we know the head coach has some prior engagements that he has to see through so we're going to keep our eye out on that and see his progress in the JPL with his team. Um, of course, we checked in with the reggae boys that had games today. The couple that we have playing in Europe, Mikel Antonio was on the losing end against Barry Leverkusen, but had a good performance. Leon Bailey had a good performance in an Aston Villa win. Yeah, this is a 60 shirt demo. Um, I don't know if you know, but... My father is a part of the CPL, and so I have some merch from the CPL, one of which being this 60, I guess you'd say training shirt or whatever you call it. Yeah. Yeah, so CPL, I have a lot of CPL merch, this being one of them. Yeah, man, my name, my name on here is Jason Gunnar, but my ID says Jason Hall. Yeah, man, Dima, I am not, um, I wouldn't say I'm a cricket enthusiast as much as yourself, but I do, I do follow the game enough. Yeah. Football has taken over what I really study and research, but I know I know quite a bit about cricket as well. And I, and I have a lot of information or or I can get a lot of information on, on the CPL especially due to my allegiance to one of the main cogs behind it happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, Dima, respect, man. Definitely going to continue. It's something that I enjoy doing, and it's not something that is contrived or forced. I just turn on the camera and the light and just start to talk to people, you know? And um, anybody who has seen me in on various platforms throughout the YouTube space, in the Reggae Boys space, you know, hopefully they'll know that I have some decent takes from time to time, and I'll speak my mind, and... Obviously, I have my allegiances to certain teams and everything, but I would like to say I'm a fair fan when it comes on to even discussing my own team. I, I, I have some form of um, filter, you know. I, I know, <laughs> I know that I can't just want everything to go my way as far as my team goes. Um, but yeah, definitely before the week is out, people. What's today? Thursday. Definitely gonna do our weekly preview show for the EPL tomorrow night at some point. Not sure how late I'm gonna do it, but just look out for the thumbnail at some point in the evening. I'll definitely post a time. I will come back to discuss the EPL weekend like we always do. Look at the matchups, look at the form of each team leading into the matchups, and do our weekly predictions. Basically, what we're gonna do, people, from now moving forward, um, typically there'll be one member of my family either on the show with me or in the chat while we're doing it. I'm going to document my scores, predictions, their score prediction, and also what I'm going to do starting this week coming up, 
I'm going to pick one subscriber or viewer, preferably a subscriber, that is following along and giving their predictions. I'm going to document theirs as well. And, um, yeah, just to make it fun and interactive, people, and just to see, you know, if you're going to beat me in the prediction race or not, which I don't, which I doubt will happen, people, but you got, you all can try, you all can try, you know? Where's the know yourself? Keep the goon locked away. Don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I'm, I'm one of the, like, a, a lot of people that know me, I'm I'm like a tolerable Gunners fan to them because as I say, like I'm not I, I can cuss Arsenal players. You know, you know, some people will just make excuses for Arsenal players, not me. I will cuss them if they need cussing, you know. So I think that's why I'm tolerable, maybe. They probably still think me delusional sometimes though. Reggae Boys Reactor say if you don't try to be right all the times and make it a learning exercise, you will do okay. Yeah, Reggae Boys Reactor, I, I don't try to be right all the time. I just am right a lot of the time. Yeah, I don't try to be doing you know. I just do my research and I speak my mind and turns out sometimes I'm right, you know. But I don't try to be. I know that I don't know everything. Um, and as you say, it is always a learning experience. You can learn from anything. That that's, That is one thing that I know. You know, you might think something might not be worth listening to or watching or but you might pick something up from it you never know you never know even if you pick up all the things you don't want to know or don't want to do it's still good to learn and see what not to do you know so yeah man everything you can learn from people but listen gonna get off the soapbox now people it's been an hour and a half or so i want to thank everybody that passed through tonight um anybody that stayed from the start to the finish Boy, you're, I rate you because that's a long show. But, of course, people, if you're watching this on the replay, as I've said a few times before, be a part of the conversation just the same. Just because you missed the live chat doesn't mean we can't have a conversation. So anything that you see while you're watching the video, be sure to drop a comment. I'll definitely check in with you, see it, and reply, and we'll have the conversation there as well. So, people, it's getting a bit late. <clears throat> Time to call it a day. But as we do at the end of the show, people, we say we're gone. Big up on yourself. It's your boy, Jason Guna. One more time with another video. And we'll be back again tomorrow with some EPL previews. Peace and love, people. Blessings.